All right. The NCAA Men's Lacrosse Tournament has announced all 18 teams into the tournament. All 18. That's right, 18. 18 teams make the tournament this year because of, you know, the AQs, how they work out and everything like that. And really the big problem here, let's go over the, the, the team that was snubbed. There was a snub here, and that team was Notre Dame. Uh, this is going to be really, really hard because, you know, Notre Dame, Harvard, Ohio State, you know, these were probably the last three teams in, in my personal opinion, at least that I think were the last three teams in because otherwise, otherwise the tournament was basically set. Like, yeah, we'll talk about all the bracket and the pairings and stuff like that, but I want to do, I do want to talk about the team that got snubbed first. There shouldn't be any surprise about Duke. Duke played their way out by losing to Notre Dame. Similar to how North Carolina played their way out by losing to Notre Dame. And also because both those teams don't have very... They, they have bad losses, no good wins, too. But Notre Dame is an interesting case. Along with Harvard, both those teams are an interesting case. Ohio State's uh, also an interesting case because, again... You know, the way these things play out is I I I, I, I don't know. Um, a lot of people are you know rightfully angry you know potentially at, at, at this uh, fact that Notre Dame didn't get in. Uh, it it it, it is kind of it is kind of rough. I, I will say that. Um, I, I I don't know, like. The Ivy League really kind of muddled things, you know, for the first time in quite some time. Because usually you see, like, the ACC getting so many teams in and they only got one team in. I personally don't think that there should have been six Ivy League teams in. And five of them were seeded, by the way. I don't think there should have been five seeded Ivy League teams, but... It is what it is, so I don't I don't know what it is. Is it the RPI? Is it the strength of schedule? I don't I don't know what it is that kept Notre Dame out over Harvard, maybe. But I can kind of see Ohio State, you know, staying in, but uh, I, I I don't know. I, I really don't know. I, I get I guess you know you know the whole you know Notre Dame sharing the ACC championship with Virginia did not matter. Of course it didn't matter, because the ACC has had a little bit of bias for a long, long time, and I, I, I genuinely can't solve it. Like, there are going to be good, there's good arguments that are probably being made right now as to why Harvard is in, and Notre Dame is out, and, and why Ohio State's in, and Notre Dame's out. I said yesterday that Ohio State and Notre Dame should be the last two teams in, because really, most of the tournament was set. It was just the, it was just the teams of the bubble. And Duke played their way out of the bubble. It was just, you know, was it going to be Ohio State or Notre Dame or Duke? I didn't think about Harvard. I, I will admit that. I didn't think Harvard would even make this tournament because they played their way out by losing to Yale. I didn't I didn't think they'd make it, but they made it into the tournament. And, you know, I thought five Ivy League teams was enough. And that's why I didn't watch the Ivy League um, conference tournament. I didn't I didn't need I didn't need to watch it because again, the Ivy League beat up on everybody out of the conference. That's why there's six Ivy League teams in too. And plus, you know, people are going to use the argument that Notre Dame didn't beat anybody in the non conference and they did not. Because Michigan is not a good win. Michigan is a complete flop. Remember I said that back in February that Michigan was a flop. And it, it just didn't work out. It turns out that Harvard did, in fact, you know, they, they do have better wins. Harvard does have better wins. I believe they beat Brown, I think. They also beat Boston, which is a conference champion. So, I, I don't know. Notre Dame didn't beat anybody in the field, and they didn't beat, you know, anybody else because they did beat Maryland. They didn't beat Georgetown. You know, they couldn't win when it mattered. I don't think they, I'm not sure if they beat Virginia or not. I forgot already. But yeah, we, there, that, that's the real big issue here is that I think we need a uniform college lacrosse schedule. We need it to be complete uniform. Like, there's no reason that Duke should be playing 18 regular season games. There's no reason Notre Dame should be playing 12. 
that doesn't make any sense you know 15 maybe like 13 to 15 for everybody and everybody has to be you know it has to have 13 games or has to have 15 games you know not you know they have they have to have this every team has to have this amount of games so I don't know I don't know I don't know man I personally say 15 because a lot of conferences there are a couple of conferences that have gotten really really big so, you know, the fact that, you know, need one but not conference games, that is kind of a, yeah, we kind of need that. Um, but, yeah, some conferences have gotten big. There's a, the, other, the other thing is that the ACC kind of needs to have a 16 already. It's it's way past time. You need to add a 16 to your conference. The no Northeast Conference is going to be gone. The SOCON is dead. You know, the SOCON will be dead after this season. The NAC is going to have to do something with the four teams that are left so I don't know but anyway let's look at this field because the opening round has Manhattan and Vermont and Robert Morris at Delaware Maryland will get the Vermont Manhattan winner and Georgetown the number two seed will get the Robert Morris Delaware winner again the eight seed is Brown they'll be taking on Virginia I personally thought that Virginia should have gotten the seed Again, I don't think five Ivy League teams should be seeded, but it is what it is. Uh, Princeton's taking on Boston. Yale's the number four, taking on St. Joe's. Penn, the three seed, takes on Richmond. Rutgers is a six, and they'll be taking on Harvard. Seven, Cornell, taking on Ohio State. That, that's the opening round in the first round. And honestly, if you don't have Maryland winning this, this whole thing, because, I mean, it's been Maryland's show the entire season. Watch Maryland all season long with Logan Wisnowskis and company, and that group is elite. I think you know the team that the teams that could give them the best test are either Virginia, Georgetown, or one of the Ivy League teams. I don't know which one, but I I'd, I'd say maybe you know maybe I don't know who I re I really don't know because the Ivy League was a bloodbath. You know that also benefited from out of conference play as well. Keep in mind, that's what again. That's why there's six Ivy League teams in, not like three or four. But in any case, I, I think you know the tournament. Uh, it, it it it's right, but it's just going to be completely controversial for however many reasons. It is what it is, and there's been some controversies before. You know back in what you know 2019 or whatever I think there was a controversy but I mean it, 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 it is what it is like no changing it now it's done who cares at this point um, let's enjoy the tournament and you know let's get it done okay let's get it done let's crown a champion that's what we're here for to crown a champ and in the NLL we got the quarterfinals are over. The quarterfinals are over. Now we have the semifinals. Um, I'm not sure if I got all my. I think I got all my predictions correct for the quarterfinals. I think. Uh, we'll talk about you know the semifinal matchups and everything in just a moment. But the quarterfinals: Toronto beat Halifax in overtime off a of Challenge Rogers game-winning goal. Tom Schreiber also had three goals, and Nick Rose had 41 saves in this game, which was insane. Colorado led by Connor Robinson's five goals, beat the defending champs, the Calgary Roughnecks, and despite Jesse King's three goals, the Roughnecks are out. At Buffalo, they take care of Albany. Dane Smith had two goals, four dimes, you know, four assists in this one, and it was, what, 10 to 5? Buffalo took care of business. San Diego, the game that I actually watched, the one quarterfinal that I could watch, you know, I could find on an actual ESPN network, you know, it was late, it was like 9 o'clock at night, where I was in San Diego, outlast Philadelphia in a thriller in which Brody Merrill had one of the clutchest saves in quite some time, the Wings' top three scores didn't even score, there was a crazy moment in this game between San Diego and Philadelphia, in which I thought, you know, it, it might have been the it might have been the wings that should have scored this goal, but I, 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 it was a goal that didn't count. You know, it was just crazy because we spent like five minutes sitting here wondering, did that goal count? And apparently it did not. So, you know, Philadelphia, 
unfortunately their season ends they had to go all the way to the west coast and their season ends just like that so Toronto and Buffalo will be in the semifinals in the, in the eastern semifinals in the west it'll be Colorado and San Diego two teams that it, I've seen at least one game for this year and Colorado San Diego gonna be a fun one I think this one will go to distance Buffalo Toronto I'm a little bit less certain on that it goes to three games I, I want to say we're gonna see Buffalo and San Diego in the NL finals that's what I'm thinking if it's if it doesn't happen then of course I'm wrong because it's me I'm, I get things wrong all the time but in any case I have Maryland winning the college lacrosse championship in, on the men's side and I have Buffalo and San Diego going to the NL finals what about y'all what do y'all think how do y'all think about Notre Dame you know because uh, I mean it is what it is you know Notre Dame did they get snubbed I don't know you know it, it's, it's, it's really hard to tell at this point so I'll see you all tomorrow and you know for this week in indoor football and I'll see you lacrosse fans once again on Memorial Day to talk the, the college lacrosse championship who's in the NL finals a little sprinkle of the PLL and speaking of the PLL real quick um, we need to get this out the way why are there only a quarter of the games on actual ESPN networks? Yeah, I get it. ESPN Plus is a thing. Yeah, I get it. ESPN has bought up all of lacrosse. I get that. However, <laughs> the Rattle Brothers, y'all should have demanded something more. You should have demanded more time slots. You know. There's, there. I, I bet you there's space open on some of these networks. I bet you, I bet you there's space open on some of these ESPN networks. You know, the NL has been using ESPN News pretty much all season. A little, a little, a little bit of ESPN U and a little bit of ESPN Two thrown in there, as well. Why didn't you beg for those spots on ESPN News? Because ESPN News has absolutely nothing, nothing. Throw in some more ABC spots as well. There, there's legit no reason as to why the PLL kind of bent it over backwards for this. If you have less than half your games, like a quarter, you know, last year on NBC, you had at least half the games on, you know, NBC or NBC Sports Network. But this season, you know, six on ESPN, three on like ESPN two, or is it ESPN and then like three on ABC? That's not gonna cut it, man. If you want to grow the game, you got to do better. And this isn't this isn't it, PLL guys. This isn't it. I'm sorry. This is an L, a huge L. Um, the committee, the the cross committee. Also a huge yell for how you seeded this tournament. It's really how the tournament got seeded that has me also in a pickle, you know, because it doesn't make any sense how the tournament was seeded, you know, for the most part. Because, I mean, again, there should be five teams from the Ivy League, you know, getting seeded. And I don't know if Harvard should have made it or not. That, 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 that's too early to tell. But, again, we'll see come tournament time this week on Wednesday when the play-in start. Again, I'll see you all tomorrow and you know lacrosse fans come on back. You know, come on back here on May 30th, which is Memorial Day. We'll talk one more time, you know, about who won the championship in the men's college game and who is advancing to the NL finals and everything like that. See you soon.